Hello, I'm Jamila Musaiba, an international social etiquette consultant and author of Etiquette Books, Etiquette, the least you need to know, and Afternoon Tea Etiquette. If you would like to order my books, please make sure to email me at infojamilamusaiba.com. I'll also link it down below in the description box. If you are a new viewer on my channel, welcome. Here I talk about etiquette, soft skills, self-development. I do book reviews. So if you're interested in all of that, make sure to subscribe and hit the bell button so you get notified every time I upload a new video. And if you're a returning viewer, welcome back to my channel. I'm delighted to see you here. In today's video, I'll talk about 10 golden rules of small talk. Small talk is a huge part of etiquette course. It is one of the most important aspects when it comes to socializing, making friends, you know, making business contacts and really being there out and about and meeting people. Small talk is crucial and we'll talk about what is small talk as well as what are some 10 golden rules you need to keep in mind when handling a small talk. If you really want to get the idea of what small talk is about and really understand how to handle it, I recommend you buy this book. It's called The Serious Business of Small Talk. This is a book that I've posted that I'm reading it and a lot of people ask me, what is the book that you're reading? So it was this book and I really liked it. Um, there are a lot of interesting information about small talk and how to handle it. So today's video is going to be a mix of the information I've gathered from this book as well as the knowledge I've received over the years of uh, working as an etiquette coach. First things first, what is a small talk? Small talk, as the name suggests, is the short, light talk that you have with someone before delving into a more deeper and more dense conversation. So it's in a way, it's a warm up for a much bigger conversation. You handle small talk on a daily basis with people you meet for the first time, or perhaps, you know, the colleague that you have been, haven't seen in a while, or maybe in the office you went to someone, you have a little small talk and then you delve into much deeper conversation. Small talk is something we have to do on a daily basis and we have to do it regardless of our profession. Also, small talk is not really about revealing your knowledge in a given subject. It's not about you showing your smartness or showing how bright you are in a given subject. It's really about showing who you are as a person. It reveals a lot of your character and your humanity. So it's sometimes more difficult even than the conversation, the bigger conversation, because you might be the best expert in the field and able to handle the bigger conversation, but you might be very awkward as small talk. So this video is geared towards people that need to learn how to become better at small talk. First things first, you cannot start a small talk without greeting people around you. Small talk starts with hello, and hello is the first word towards world peace. You greet the people that you see, that initiates you into a small talk. Who greets whom is another question and that is very much about etiquette. If you are in a business setting, so this is a business etiquette, the people of a lower rank will greet the people of a higher rank. So if you see your boss in a corridor, you must greet them. If you see someone who is higher than you um, in a certain position, then you would say hello first. However, if you're in a social setting, so this is a party you're attending and it has nothing to do with your work, then other things will matter. Men greet women and younger ones greet elder ones. So the priority is given first to women and then to the age. And whereas in business etiquette, it's the ranking that matters the most. Remember who greets whom and don't forget to say hello. Also, if you are the person that enters the room of people that are already seated, then you're the one that has to greet everyone in the room. So suppose you enter a lecture hall, you have to greet the rest of the people seated there. You walk into a business room, business meeting room, and everyone is seated then, you're the one that has to greet everyone. If you start greeting them with hello and a handshake, you have to go and greet every single person in that room with a hello and a handshake. You can just handshake one person and leave the rest out. Either you don't handshake anyone or you handshake everyone and greet everyone equally. The second essential rule of a small talk once you've greeted the people around you is exchanging names. Exchanging name is a centered piece of early introductions. You cannot start a small talk without exchanging names. It's important to remember the name of the person that you're greeting. And I'll talk a little bit about what are some techniques that you can use to remember the names better. 
The first technique that you can use is called associations. What you can do is try to remember the name of the person with something that is familiar to you. So perhaps someone is called Robert and you have a friend that's Robert and you can tie something in common between him and this new Robert that you met. Associations are great for people that are, have been using it in learning languages like I have or you know you've been using association in other aspects of your life but if it's something that confuses you then perhaps what you could do is try repeating their names within the first hour of meeting them try to incorporate their names while you're having a small talk with them continuously say Robert what you said is really interesting I would like to know more Robert what an interesting idea or Robert was really nice meeting you the more you use that name within the first hour of meeting the likelihood of you remembering them the name is much higher. Another way of remembering the name is introducing the person that you have just met to someone else. You know how they say that when you learn something, teach it to someone else, that way you're going to remember it better yourself. And it's true about remembering the names. If you've just learned the name, try introducing that person to someone else so you can better remember their name. In fact, studies show that nothing is more attractive to a person than their own name. Hearing our own name soothes us and makes us feel closer to the person that uses our name. In fact, a technique that I have uh, taught a lot of my students is when you see that you're losing someone's interest while you're having a conversation or you really want to attract their attention, start by saying their name out loud. So say someone is talking, you're talking and someone is dozing off and you see they're gazing away, use their name immediately. That will bring their attention back to you and then you can continue saying what you want to be heard. Point number three when it comes to small talk is keeping it super light. It's the killer of a conversation, a killer of a small talk when someone asks you an innocent question, something super light, and you go into a very depth, in-depth explanation of an issue. No one wants that in a small talk. Small talk has to be small, has to be light, has to be very easy, doesn't have to overwhelm the person that is listening to you. People really don't like long narratives. If you want to explain or share a story, keep it very short and brief, make it clear and specific and get to the point immediately. That will save you both the time as well as the attention spam of the person that's listening to you. Speaking of keeping it light takes me to the next point. And the fourth point is choosing your subject of a small talk carefully. This is important because you have to keep in mind that you cannot have a small talk with someone of about a topic that they feel either uncomfortable talking about or they don't have anything, any knowledge of and that's not their interest, that's not their reality. The topics that you should stay away and be more uh, mindful of are things like health, wealth, money, you know, personal life, sexual orientation, religion, politics. These are things that can lead to uncomfortable starts. So better to be safe and start on topics that are more easy to have a conversation about that daily news, maybe a book that you both have read, maybe some common interests, hobbies that you have in common. Try to pull from the shared experience or from a shared common interest and then start off with that. That will allow you to let the person feel closer to you because you have some kind of a shared interest. Choosing a topic of conversation is something that I will talk a little bit more in my final point, but what you need to keep in mind is the person or the country that this person is from that you're having your conversation small talk with. The reason it's important because in some cultures it's acceptable to start a small talk about talking the, about family or about health, whereas in other cultures it's absolutely not welcomed to talk about family and health. So you have to keep in mind the culture of the person that you're having a small talk with. The fifth golden rule of small talk is that it should be a dialogue and not a monologue. Oftentimes people want to impress others in their small talk and they take over the stage and just keep on talking and talking and talking. This also happens when a person feels nervous and they feel like they need to talk a lot to fill the silence. There would be no silence if this is a dialogue. Interestingly, in this book, The Serious Business of a Small Talk, the author mentions how small talk is pretty much like volleying uh, in a tennis. So it precedes a tennis game, but it's a sort of a ritualistic practice where you are offering the ball to the opponent in such a way that there are chances for him to hit back.
This is not about scoring, keeping the score. This is just about understanding what is the style of your opponent in terms of the playing this game. So it's very cooperative, very ritualistic, and allows you to understand your opponent better. And the author says the small talk is very much like wallying. It's allowing each other to talk so that you understand what is their communication style. To better understand your opponent, so to speak, the person you're having a small talk with, their conversation style, you have to be genuinely interested in what they have to say. I keep on saying this over and over in my classes and this takes me to the sixth golden rule of small talk is be interested, not just interesting. It's not enough to be the most interesting person. It's very important to be an interested person. So you're really curious to get to know the person you're having a small talk with better and really easing them into having a conversation with you. In the book, How to Talk to Anyone, the author says that there are two kind of people in this world, in this life. Those that walk into the room and say, well, here I am. And those that say, that walk into the room and say, ah, there you are. And it's true because in a case, well, here I am, sounds a lot like a person who just wants to be interesting. And the people that say, oh, there you are, are the people that are truly interested in getting to know you better. And what do you think we as people appreciate more? Which kind of a person we would most likely have a better small talk with? Please you leave your answers down in the comment section below and I'll be really excited to read them. Truly admire your conversation partner. You really be interested in learning about them or what they have to tell you. And in order to be genuinely interested, you have to be able to ask questions, which is the seventh golden rule of small talk. And the kind of questions that you will ask are the ones that are going to either help you carry out the small talk or be a obstacle for you to have the small talk rolling and be light and be very easy for both of you. So the most important rule when it comes to asking questions is asking open-ended questions, which means whenever you ask something, the answer cannot be yes or no. The questions like, do you have, let's say, a dog or a cat would be yes or no. But you could say, why do you like dogs more? Or why did you get this particular breed? Well, let the conversation flow. Asking questions that cannot be just simply answered by yes or no are called open-ended questions. The ones that make the person have a conversation and answer in more details than just yes or no. Another important question types that you can incorporate into small talk are called follow-up questions, which means these are the questions that stem from something that your partner has already shared. Let's say they say, I really like this breed of dog because it's easy to handle, they're hypoallergenic or whatever the reasons are. And you say, oh, like I have a friend that also got this dog, but you know, they had a lot of difficult time taking care of it. Do you think, and then you for continue with that topic. So a follow-up question has to be about something that I've already shared and you are just following up on that information and allowing the partner to elaborate more. People oftentimes feel shy about asking questions because oftentimes they might come up as being rude or intrusive and we often don't want to make that impression with a small talk. In order to not have this questions, your questions sound intrusive, what is important to do is share briefly about something that's related to you. So a question that you're going to ask, you have to give a little bit of information about yourself and then proceed with a question. So instead of just you know jumping ahead and saying, what do you do for life? You could say, I am an author. For example, in my case, I'm an author, but I'm also a part-time YouTuber. I talk about etiquette on my channel. And what do you do? So I give a little bit of information about myself, so expose myself and then ask a follow-up question that also will allow the person to introduce themselves or talk about themselves. So whenever you share a little bit about yourself or how a topic is related to you and then ask a follow-up question, it sounds less intrusive and it allows the person to ease up into a small talk. The best kind of questions to ask a person is something that 
you two have common interests in or it's a shared reality for both of you. Some kind of question that will allow the speaker to talk about something that they would like to talk about. So if you, someone is into gardening and you ask a question, open-ended question about gardening, that will get them talking. And that's what you want to do with a small talk. Of course, it's very difficult to find what that person wants to talk about, especially if you just meet them for the very first time at a networking event. You don't know what they're interested in. What you could do is start a small talk with something that you see together right now. Maybe it's the room you want to discuss, maybe it's the event or the speakers that you want to discuss. And in that conversation in that small talk you will start understanding what are some interests of the person what they are really keen about and then follow up questions with the things that they would like to talk about that will make the speaker feel much more at ease talking to you the eighth golden rule of small talk is about the way that you respond to these questions or rather how you respond to them so if the first rule is when you are answering questions try to be more specific avoid vague answers because they're not going to create that wrapper that you want to establish. General information is only interesting when it is specific. That's something that is mentioned in this book as well. For example, let's say you want to talk about the weather and you want to say how it's getting hot. Instead of just generalizing that weather is getting hot, you could say, I live in Spain and the weather this summer in Spain was extremely hot. This allows the person that you're having the small talk with either ask you a follow-up question about Spain or perhaps your life in Spain or you know how are generally the weather conditions in Spain. So this allows the person to catch on a topic, on the next topic of conversation and carry on. Also, another example I could give you is, for example, if someone asks you about um, how are you liking this event? There's a panel of speakers. Instead of just saying, oh, the speakers are very well educated and interesting to listen to, name a specific speaker that you liked and a particular reason why you like them. Because that will allow the other person to respond either with their favorite kind of speaker or why they also like the speaker that you like. So the more specific the information is in a small talk uh, with the dates, with the names, with the specific information, the more it allows you to have a much more um, open small talk and the one that will allow you to establish a trustworthy relationship. Continuing on with the speaking or answers, also keep in mind that you don't want to answer briefly and you don't want to answer in a way that the person can't even follow up with the next point. Uh, I feel like a lot of us that are using social media have encountered this when say you're sending a meme to a friend of yours about something super funny and they say, oh, I've seen it or I've heard this. Um, oh, I saw it a while back. It is the momentum killer. There's no way you can carry on the conversation from there onwards. And there are people like that answered in real life to small talk like that. Someone says, have you heard that there's something, a, a new storm coming up? And someone says, oh yeah, I heard it on the news. That's it. You can't continue the conversation. It's very difficult to carry on. You want to answer with a ways that helps the other person ask you questions and helps you to explain yourself so that the two of you can really have a dialogue. When I say that you don't want to kill the momentum and instead carry on the conversation and don't say I've seen this or I've heard this even if you have, oftentimes students ask me why is that I have to fake it? If I have seen it, I want to say I've seen it and you know end the conversation. And I explain that small talk is not about revealing how smart you are, it's not revealing how well aware you are of things and you know how educated or knowledgeable you are. It's really about allowing the person ease into you and your character and who you are as a person. So allow them to enjoy this moment of sharing information with you and instead of just killing the momentum and saying, oh I've seen this, I've heard this a while back, you can say you know, when I heard this the very first time, it really shocked me because I didn't know about X, Y, and Z. And that allows the conversation to flow. You can don't have to lie if, about things. You don't have to say, oh, I have never seen this such an interesting story you're sharing. If you have heard about it, you can say, yes, the first time I heard about it was a while back and I thought about something and then share the information. The ninth golden rule of a small talk is being an active listener. 
So as we know, a small talk is about one person talking, the other person listening, and then the other way around. So when someone talks, you have to become an active listener. And who is an active listener? Is the person that we love the most, like the most, because they not only were listening to us, but they were actually hearing what we have to say. In this book, uh, This Year's Business of Small Talk, the author mentions how it's not just about what you say and how you say it, but it's truly about how you hear it. And to be able to hear it well, you have to actively show that you are listening. There are some verbal ways of showing it by saying yes, right, and confirming the information or ask follow-up questions, asking leading up questions that show that you actively have been listening to the information that has been shared with you. But also a lot about our body shows how we are actively listening. And there is this technique that's in an acronym called SOFTEN, where S stands for smile. So when we're listening, we're smiling. O stands for open posture, so our body is not blocked from the person that we're having a conversation with, so no arms crossed, no legs crossed, just open body, open posture. Uh, the F stands for forward lean, which means we come a little bit closer to show that we are bringing our ears closer to the person so we can hear them better. The T stands for touch. The touch should be very careful. You have to keep in mind if it's an opposite gender, you don't want to be very intrusive. You want to keep in mind that the touch should be gentle and should be whenever it is appropriate. A touch establishes that feeling of trustworthiness and this feeling of closeness to the person. The E stands for eye contact. So when we're listening, we have to have our eyes on the person talking because if we gaze away, that shows that our interest is wandered off and we're looking for some other place to look at. It's important to continue that eye contact and the N stands for not. So even if we don't want to con continuously say yes, right, and interrupt the person, we can with our body language show that we are agreeing and that is by nodding while they're talking. So remember soften to reveal that you're an active speaker and be genuinely interested in what your small talk partner wants to say. And the final goal to remove of small talk is knowing the person or the culture of the person you are having the small talk with, because that's going to really influence the topic, the dynamic of the small talk, and what kind of small talk you can carry out with that person. Of course, a lot is influenced by our social upbringing, our mentality, and things like that, but generally speaking, culture plays a huge role in establishing the kind of a small talk that is safe for you to carry out. For example, in Azerbaijan, when people have a small talk, they prefer to talk about health, family, you know, kids, and that's very common. And people might ask about you and your family, your kids, your husband, and the answers are usually genuine. They're not just to, you know, brush away with an answer and say everything is great, where nothing is truly great. People love to share their problems, love to share their experiences and what they're going through, and you have to really be an active listener and hear them out. In the US, for example, if you're asked how are you or how how is your family, you might say it's great, everyone's fine. You wouldn't necessarily share a lot of details about your family. Uh, so this is a difference between Azerbaijani culture in terms of small talk versus American. Uh, in the book, the author mentions how, for example, the Brazilians and Italians are fond of small talk and they'll have quite a lot amount of time spent on small talk before they can get into a delve into a much deeper conversation. Scandinavia, Swiss and Germans really don't much like the small talk by itself. They don't like this empty chat, so to speak. They prefer to get into more serious conversation and not just chat for sake of covering the silence, but rather have a deep conversation. Also, most of Asian countries as well as Arab countries truly enjoy small talk and you would expect the people to really engage into small talk way before having a very serious conversation. So if you have business partners from these countries, expect to engage into small talk before you get to, to a very deep conversation or before you get to business, so to speak. Knowing the culture of the person that you're having a small talk with will help you a lot in understanding what are some topics that you can talk about as well as how you will carry out the small talk, what to expect of it, as well as do they really enjoy small talk or would you rather get into the serious conversation straight away. 
culture matters, upbringing matters, mentality matters. Keep that all in mind when you're having the small talk. Thank you so much for watching this video until the very end. I hope that these 10 golden rules will help you become better at small talk, which is super important, crucial element of social life. Please let me know which, are these, which of these rules you found most useful or practical. And if you have some more tips to share, please do so in the comment section below, as well as do let me know what are some video suggestions that you have for me. I'll be more than happy to film those videos for you. Thank you, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!